there's a lot of debate as to what kind of Pakistan Qaeda Azam wanted. Whether he wanted Pakistan to be Islamic or secular, we're not going to beat that dead horse. But hopefully we can all agree that Qaeda Azam did not want Pakistan to be a theocracy. Even though it has been derailed, defiled and defamed at every turn, there is no doubt Pakistan was meant to be a democracy. The right to rule over Pakistan comes from the ballots rather than a man claiming to be a supreme authority who's ruling over the country with divine guidance. Then why do we see experiments like Ziaul Haq's Islamization, Zulfiqar Ali Bhutto's Islamic socialism, Nawaz Sharif's desire to be Amir ul and Imran Khan's Riyasat e Medina? The criticism of the use of religion in Pakistan in politics is often straw-manned and swatted away by raising the fear amongst the masses that the liberals in Pakistan want an irreligious society. Even though calls for secularism in Pakistan do not call for an eradication of religion in Pakistan, it simply asks for a separation between the church and the state. It is exactly what Qaid Azam said. As far as the law is concerned, it does not matter whether you're Hindu or Muslim or Christian. However, today, I'm not even asking for that much. The only question we're raising in today's episode of Pakistan Lost is... How has Pakistani politics been reduced to a question of electing a leader on the basis of who is a better Muslim? A metric that simply relies on optics and rhetoric. Even the most progressive out of the three big parties had MNA Musa Gilani, the son of the former Prime Minister, Yusuf Raza Gilani, exclaiming proudly on the campaign trail that it was Zulfiqar Ali Bhutto who declared Ahmadis to be non-Muslims. He is right. It was Zulfiqar Ali Bhutto originally. Then Ziaul Haq came up with the ordinances. Even if Zulfiqar Ali Bhutto's supporters may claim that he did so under immense pressure from the religious right, a religious right that was being charged up by the military establishment to oppose him. I don't even want to list all the things PMLN's Captain Safdar and several PTI leaders have said about the matter. Again, it does not even matter what your religious beliefs are. Just tell me one thing. When the economy is on the verge of default, people are queuing up for miles for a bag of flour, Shouldn't we ask more from our politicians than simply electing people on the basis of whose speeches are more violent towards Ahmadis? Why is it that politicians in Pakistan do not talk about policy, education, the economy, and mostly just focus on religion to get votes? To use the love the people of Pakistan have for Islam against them. To weaponize that love against their political opponents. TLP and PTI ran a vicious blasphemy campaign against PMLN in 2017. It led to federal ministers having to apologize, resign, and Asin Iqbal was even shot over it. How can it be that people in Pakistan can seize power simply by declaring their political opponents to be infidels? We don't talk about the economic performance and service delivery of governments because it is much easier to put a target on their back by declaring them to be infidels. This was the same tactic that was used against Benazir Bhutto, the same tactic that was used against Zulfiqar Ali Bhutto, the same tactic that was used against Fatma Jana, Mujibur Rahman, Bacha Khan, Chaudhary Zafarullah. It seems like the establishment has the same playbook it plays by. But we've discussed that at length in our series on Pakistan between the mosque and the military by Hussein Haqqani. I come back to the question we ask in this episode. Why have elections in Pakistan been reduced to a question of who is more Muslim? At what point in our history did we zig when we should have zagged? What has brought us to this era of Islamic Dutch politics? Is it Ziaulak? Was it the Pakistan movement itself? I think the answer lies in over a century ago. In a moment that our history books teach us to celebrate. The Indian Councils Act 1909 or the Moral Limento Reforms. This is where Muslim League's demand for separate electorates was granted to them. Writers like Sashi Tharoor may even present this as a conspiracy from the British to divide Hindus and Muslims. But regardless of the intentions, the result was that Muslims would vote for Muslims and Hindus would vote for Hindus. The notion of separate electorates goes beyond simply a question of representation. Representations for the Muslims could have been negotiated with a guaranteed number of seats or candidates to be of the Muslim faith. What separate electorates does is create the conditions where a Muslim candidate simply has to appeal to the Muslim population to get their vote. If no non-Muslim is even eligible to vote in the election, why even appeal to them? From a strategic standpoint, maybe the Muslim League thought this would bring them one step closer to their eventual demand of a separate country. We see how the movement for the demand of Pakistan was also a demand for a separate Muslim homeland. In that way, this worked. 
However, one mistake people make is using Muslim state interchangeably with an Islamic state. A Muslim state is where Muslims live, and an Islamic state is a government based on Sharia law. Interestingly, religious minorities in Pakistan post 1947 have always opposed separate electorates and have demanded joint electorates in Pakistan. They've boycotted elections when they felt their demand was not being met and they were being disenfranchised. Back in 1916, Congress and the Muslim League signed the Lucknow Pact. Congress agreed to the separate electorates and one third representation of the Muslim population in the imperial and provincial legislative council. The Lucknow Pact is also taught to us as a great victory, but KK Aziz writes about how strongly the Punjabi and Bengali leaders reacted to the injustices against the two provinces. More weightage was given to Muslim minority provinces like Bihar, CP, UP and Madras at the cost of Punjab and Bengal. Years later after partition when elections were held for the East Pakistan Legislative Assembly in 1954 the ruling party the Muslim League won only 9 seats out of 228 and barely 2 months later the ministry formed was dismissed and governor's rule imposed with 1600 members of the winning party the United Front arrested including 30 members of the legislature if we look at all of this together All this made the politics of the Muslim League be well Muslim and we're not even saying this shouldn't be we're again just asking a simple question should politics not be reduced to declaring each other kafir and using religion to gain votes we're not advocating for a political system in Pakistan that has nothing to do with Islam we're asking for politics not to be reduced to who is more muslim that isn't a lot to ask for is it And this is what happens because of all of this. We'll end this episode with political analyst and journalist Sayyid Muzammil Shah giving us a brief history of the use of the Islamic touch in politics in Pakistan. तो खैर वो चलते हैं। बड़ा अच्छी वीडियो बनाई इस्लामिक टच की हिस्ट्री पे जरा हमें दे दें एक समरी ब्रीफ ओवरव्यू। बस उसमें वो ऑब्जेक्टिव रेजोल्यूशन से शुरू हुआ था मैं। वैसे तो उससे पहले की रूट्स हैं। 46 के इलेक्शन में भी कुछ कमिटमेंट्स रिलिजियस ग्रुप्स के साथ ऐसी हुई थी। कि जी आपकी जो आपका नज़रिया ना वो वाला इस्लाम आएगा इस पाकिस्तान में और बाद में इसीलिए कोई ख़ास जवाब ही नहीं मिला कि किस किस्म का आएगा ताकि बाकी नाराज़ ना हो जाएं तो खैर बढ़ते बढ़ते आगे फिर जब कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन बना 56 वाला तो उसके अंदर भी जो है ना वो इस्लामिक रिपब्लिक नाम पहली दफ़ा रखा तो नौ साल पहले काफिर रहे फिर सिक्सटी वाला बना तो उसमें पहले रिपब्लिक रख दिया नाम पहले तो फिर भुट्टो साहब ने भी एडवाइस किया कि इस्लामिक लगाओ पीछे नहीं चलेगा काम ऐसे तो एक एक आध महीना फिर काफिर हुए फिर लगा दिया इस्लामिक उसके बाद से तो उसके बाद में फिर भुटो साहब ने भी जब सोशलिज़म की तहरीक का आगाज़ किया तो उन्होंने कहा कि इसके पीछे भी इस्लामिक होना चाहिए तो इस्लामिक सोशलिज़म तो फिर आगे चलते चलते वो शराब वाला करना पड़ा मामला उनको और जुमे की छुट्टी और वो सारा कुछ तो मूविंग ऑन तो ज़िया साहब आ गए तो फिर वो तो हर जगह ही टच शुरू हो गया ना वो तो फिर क्लियर है सबको उसके बाद क्या होता रहा फिर नवाज़ शरीफ साहब अपने आप को अमीर उलमोमिन कहने की कोशिश करते रहे और अल्लाह ज़िया को करवट करवट जन्नत नसीब करे अंग्रेज़ों के खुदे न लाने वाली बेनज़ीर ये हमारे खिलाफ़ कैसे खड़ी होगी ये कह दिया जाके और उस बेस पे पॉलिटिक्स करते रहे मतलब आई जी बनाई और वो सारा कुछ किया और उन्होंने क्या फ़ेस किया अभी रिसेंटली कि टीएलपी ने उन पर ब्लासिमी के फतवे लगाए तो जिस जिसने भी इस चीज़ को हाथ लगाया कल को उसी से कैंसिल हुआ वो भुटो साहब के अगेंस्ट भी बेसिकली जो पाकिस्तान नेशनल अलाइंस थी उसमें रिलीजस एलिमेंट बड़ा क्लियर था कि वो पार्ट था उसका इसी तरह इमरान खान साहब की मिसाल ले लें कि इन्होंने रियासत मदीना का इतना नाम लिया और अभी जिसने गोली मारी वो भी यही जवाब पेश कर रहा था अजान में लाउड स्पीकर चलाया हुआ था मैंने मार दिया बेशक वो फेक लग रहा है जो भी है लेकिन इनके अगेंस्ट वो यूज़ हुआ इन्होंने मौलाना समी के मदरसे को फ़ंड किया उन्होंने कहा यह होती एजेंडा ये एक साल बाद कोई फ़ायदा नहीं हुआ तो पाकिस्तान की हिस्ट्री में कभी रिलीजस ग्रुप्स को इतना वोट नहीं पड़ा जितना मुशरफ़ के टाइम पे मुशरफ़ की बनाई गई मुतहदा मजलिस अमल एम एम ए को मिला जिसने पाकिस्तान के पूरे नॉर्थ को दोबारा रेडिकलाइज़ करने में बड़ा तगड़ा किरदार अदा किया तो ये मुशरफ़ साहब की कारस्तानी थी जिसको लोग कहते हैं कि बड़ा सेकुलर आदमी था और क्या कहना चाहिए कि एम्बिशस इैशनल डॉगमेटिक डिसीजन मेकर से पॉइंट ये था कि अब भी अगर आपको लगता है कि ये इस्लामिक टच पर पॉलिटिक्स करनी है तो आपका नंबर भी आएगा यूर इन द लाइन 